Alright, time for a Wukong game. I will be playing against a Lee Sin here, which is okay-ish. Uh, he will have an advantage, I think, in early fights. After level 3, like if I can use my W, for example, to block his Q, I'll be doing quite well. Uh, my clear speed isn't that good. I'm actually just going to start bot lane and just get the best leash I can. Because, yeah, you kind of need all the assistance you can get on Wukong. At the moment, I wouldn't really say he's a very good champion in the jungle. But, I mean, people want to see him apparently. So, well, and here we are, I guess. <laughs> uh, this is going to be a high emerald game as well. Bordering like Diamond MMR. So, you guys are aware of that too. And, yeah... I'll show you like the, the way I, I play Wukong to try to make it as consistent as possible. I've tried some variations on builds and stuff, and this is the one I like the most. And uh, the setup I like the most, so that's all I'll be showing you here. There you go. Just get this in here. Go for the Q for like extra damage and attacks, uh, auto attacks. You, If you take W, like second, you'll take a bit less damage, of course, but I just need clear speed, really. Need to get those hits in. Okay. Sustainability is pretty decent again, I would say. So there's that. Plus you obviously have your uh, your uh, passive, which helps. In the armor department, so you should be fine on health. You're gonna have to take W on level 3 for sure for the uh, like tankability of your camps, I guess. We'll see here. What's getting pushed in. Caitlyn does have first blood. I should have W'd before I queued. That was a mistake. But here, as you can see, you can like use your W to tank quite effectively, which prevents you from losing a bunch of health. You really want to try to avoid uh, going for a uh, or for for a potion in your initial clear, because you really want to have all the money you can have for your TM at. Because at the only way that I found Wukong to be consistent whatsoever is with TM at. Like without TM at, Wukong is just simply not consistent enough. To like give wins like the the only thing you can at that point have is like good kills and just get lucky really uh, that would be okay but in any other situation without tmat you are absolutely crying because uh, you need that clear speed you, need, you actually need like that additional tempo on your camps i'm not gonna w here because i'd want the w if i'm gonna go for like any type of fight situation it's a pretty long cooldown so i do have to respect that a bit okay i mean as you can see Barely within time at 3.30, uh, but we did get a leash as well, so pretty reasonable one at that. So if I did a leash list, that would be kind of bad. He just cleared the scuttle, I believe. There he is. That means he's like right here. Just do a bunch of damage to Lissandra here. Seems reasonable. There's no way Lissandra goes for that. Thanked it, good. I am dead to that, though. This, however, is very, very worth it for me. And I committed to that because I can afford my TM at instantly on that back. Getting a kill in a situation like that is absolutely huge. So I'm going for that every single time. If I can trade my life for a kill, I will do it every single time. It's not the best rotation towards the least in there. Need to wait patiently with my uh, E and stuff. Okay, Caitlyn gets to do some good damage to me, I suppose. Silas is apparently still chilling on mid lane. Eh, I don't like this from Silas. I think that was definitely a winnable situation and very winnable even. But he just wanted to stay mid lane instead. Interesting. Alright, sure. Fair enough. I mean, I'm gonna just get my jungle clear in once again. I need to keep this consistency up big time. Okay, you're dead. Is he dead? He's alive. Well, fair play. Wow, Caitlyn even died. Okay. That's huge for my bot lane right there. Not bad at all. Yeah, so getting the kill trade there is very, very good for me. I also have the Futures Market to try and secure. Like, even on an assist, I could have secured that, if that makes sense, right? So that's what I'm really trying to do as much as possible. You use your W for some extra AoE. But you can see now, this is the only way you're clearing is, like, consistent enough. 
with a Q max to the point that it's actually fine. Because without Tiamat, you're just not going to have enough consistency. I'm going to run Tulpus if I can here. Is he going to win this? He did win that, but he's dead. All right, fair enough. Uh, yeah, sure. I'm going to have to shove this. I don't know how fast I can shove this. I have Tiamat, so I should be real relatively fast here at least. Can use my W here as well to help me push slightly faster. That's, that this should be good for Alawi because now it doesn't freeze. I needed to do that, but this also Tiamat helps with that as well, which is really really nice. I think uh, he gets that. No, he doesn't because Lissandra just hit six. Okay. I'm just gonna clean this up and then we'll just reset because I have nothing else to do on top side here right now. Take the reset, go for the blue, which hit me six, and I should be able to do something bolt after that. I just got the AD. Obviously, I have free boots, so I'm not going to be able to purchase boots right now, which is completely fine. Uh, yeah. Mm. Looking at this team, I'm like I'm the I'm between Trinity Force and uh, Divine. So this is not good. I think the Korkmaz passive could get the Caitlyn. Does get the Caitlyn, okay. I don't know if this is warded. This is warded for sure, but this might not be warded. Oh god. Ah, go in, go in, go for it. Damn it. Unlucky. I wanted to like hit. I needed to hit some minions to hit six there. I didn't really want to mess up his wave too much. The only way I would commit it to that if that would have been something I could win fight wise without messing up his wave too badly, or if I could just get a double kill with messing up with messing up his wave, I would have done that still. But yeah, I'm gonna move towards here. This might not be up, or this he might not be here, but. I think he'd sooner be on his raptors than on his krugs. He'd already... Oh, he's bot lane, okay. Another one for one. Let's just go for this. I don't know if Lee Sin has kick or not. What? Yo, excuse me? What? Did I stand in a Caitlyn trap or something? Or did Lee Sin CC? Ah, oh, whatever, man. He still had his kick after all that? Really? That sucks. I really did not expect him to kick there. I'm gonna go for this thing, actually. I, I genuinely did not expect Lee Sin to still have kick after that. I would have imagined he used it earlier. That sucks on my end. I misjudged the situation. That's really bad, actually. Misjudging that situation is really bad for me. Oh god. Oh no. Can I make this? I mean, this is obviously like... My camps are up though, so I really don't want to be doing this. And it's dead. It's gonna get dove most likely, I would imagine. Not the Caitlyn in the air. There we go, good. I needed to do that. I did, they were like, it was looking more and more like a dive, so it just makes sense there, right? He did drag, and that's fine. I do not want to go bot lane at all. If Korkman dies for this, he dies for this. I don't care. Because I cannot move bot here. My entire jungle is up, and I'd be wasting way too much time trying to defend Korkman to get like a wave or whatever if Lee Sin goes for it. I need to clear my camps. Consistency is absolutely everything. Okay, big kills for Lil Aoi. I don't think their team is tanky enough for me to consider going for the uh, Sunderer, honestly. It really is between like Sunderer and Triforce for like your Mythic on Wukong. And into the squishier teams, I'd consider this still a squishier team. If they had like a full-on tank, I would build Sunderer for sure, but... A bunch of Bruisers are still squishy enough. I don't think Sunderer is a very good item in general, so... Generally tend to prioritize Trinity Force in as many, in many situations as I can. Because of that. And this is one of those situations where you could argue that Sunder is good, but Sunder is just a bad item, so I don't like it at all, really. Got nerfed way too much. Trinity Force actually uh, is in a pretty reasonable spot, so we are going for that. 
It's got the glare in here. We just go instantly back to bolt lane. They just used all their summoners earlier, and my ult will be up by the time I get there, basically. I could also try to go for the jacks here. I wouldn't be against this. There's a control ward there, and this is not warded, so we can just go whatever she wants. That's a very good pull-in. He's dead here. Very nice. And we're just gonna not touch the wave at all. Max W second. Actually, no, I have to go for Rift Herald here instead of backing. We can go for this. Good. I do not have smite for this, but I don't think it's gonna be a problem. Definitely think Lee Sin's going to be bot side. That's the only thing he can do. Oh, nope, he's here. I have to go for this. I apologize, Silawi, but... Uh... Oh, this is ward. That's not good. Ah, uh, great. Lovely. I'm just gonna have to leave. Come on, man! Are you kidding me? 1E. E. Thank you, Jesus Christ. I would have been so sad if I missed that. I played that really well, going back over the wall with E to hit it. I'm just gonna insta-herald for money at this point. Because she was just topside, so she should be free. I don't want any of his CS, I'm just lowering it. So we push the wave as fast as possible. I'm just gonna, trying to give him as much as I can give him. I could have used the Herald later, potentially, to get, like, the turret down, but I don't think I'm gonna get the turret down anyway. I think this is all about all the time I had in this situation, because of low death timers, so I'm just gonna do that and instantly reset here. And we're gonna take our Trinity Force, and we should be pretty strong. Yeah, you can see, like, the consistency of clearing is necessary with the Tiamat here. Just why I went for that. Now, I didn't use my Futures Market this game, but it can come in extremely helpful in other situations. Uh, you are so dead. Uh, she actually has flash. If she had flash, I don't know. She pathed down here instead of up towards the wall faster, which killed her instantly. It's a pretty bad placement on her pathing. Let's see if I can prevent this dive from happening. Okay, they saw me, so this might mean that the dive is okay. It's a TP as well. The ward's almost out, so hitting it was pointless. If he wants to go in, I'm down, but... It's good. Ah, uh, somewhat good. Actually, pretty bad. Are you serious? Block it for me, the... Oh my god. Lulu is back. I actually thought I would be able to get the Caitlyn there, but... Shove this into the turret as fast as possible. Uh, Lulu is in such a bad place, man. What are you doing, mate? No, I'm dead. Ah, oh, Lulu, I swear to God. Like, why are you hitting a ward over here? I oh, okay, whatever. <laughs> I should have not tried anything, honestly, after, uh, after Lulu did that. Because she cannot be hitting a ward over there. We need her to, like, tank turret aggro. <laughs> She needs to just go in and hit Caitlyn and take the turret aggro, you know what I mean? Or shield or whatever, right? But, yeah, she started hitting a ward on the side there. I should have instantly, the moment she did that, I should have just completely walked away. Because it was really, really troll for me to try to go for a fight with Lulu doing that. Because that instantly, I, we could just cannot survive that, really, right? He's gonna go for my Grom for sure, right? Goodbye. Way too greedy there, buddy. Definitely going for dragon. Absolutely. That's nice. Yeah, I need to I need to be a bit smarter about a situation like that. If your support makes the mistake, don't try to still go for the play that you think is right in the first place, which is an error I just made there. So, yeah. It's okay. A bit of a mess up on my end. Alright, we have an entire jungle rotation to do once again, so I gotta get on that as quickly as possible. I'm definitely a little bit behind on farming still in this game, but, you know, 
It's okay. I got some, like, kill situations for it, so it's not that bad. There we go. Good thing about Trinity Force as well is, like, the attack speed it gives, uh, which is really helpful over, like, the Sunderer. The attack speed's actually really, really nice. Alright, before we continue with the rest of this video, I quickly wanted to mention that about 60% of the people who watch my videos aren't actually subscribed. So if you do enjoy my content, it would be greatly appreciated if you'd consider subscribing, checking if you're subscribed, and maybe hitting the like button as well. But with that being said, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of this one. Still see people like default to Sunder every single time and it just, nah. You know what I mean? the rest of these camps i need to like get my smite upgrade and hit level 11 so for me right now this is crucial as you can see tiamat is giving me very very good clear speed that's really good i need to finish the last camp here as well i need level 11. i might be able to smite this and actually defend top turret still Should be able to defend top third here. Hey, he doesn't get it. This is good. Let's clean it up. Take the reset. Get the Hydra. They're gonna get that Rift Herald most likely, but that's okay. Cleaver. No, sorry, not Cleaver. I'm going for... Uh, most likely going for Sterax next. Because if you're going Trinity Force, you should go Sterax. Every single time, no question. That's a kill. That's a Caitlyn Hill kill. Yep, nice. Uh, that might prompt me to be able to do a uh, Rift Herald, potentially. This is a Death Rush, it's fine. Okay. Pretty spicy, he got ignited and thresh flashed. Uh, his raptor should be up, I think, based on his pl uh, placement there. Not, okay. Sucks, I needed one camp to heal, it's, it's respawning. Ah, plants here, okay, that helps. I need some health back, basically. Going for a Rift Herald, and I don't think I can stop it. Because of my placement for my solo liners right now. Silas is going bot lane and Elawi is just walking back to top right now, so. I may have been a mistake. I did cut Caitlyn for half her health, actually. It's not that bad. If I had ult there, that could have been great. I thought Lissandra actually already would have recalled in that scenario. So that's why I went over the wall. But the recall timing was a bit messed up in my head. Yeah, I, I could not have contested this because of Silas being bot and Elawi not being in position to do anything about that. So I'm just going to avoid going for Rift Herald there. It's not that big of a deal. Okay, Elawi walking up now is pretty troll though because he's most likely going to die to Lee Sin. I'm going to try to rush over here if I can. I know I walked over control, but I have no room to clear this. She doesn't have Hillbreaker. We're getting close. Uh, she didn't even ult, man. She did not even click it. That's really bad. It's really, really poorly played there. I was so sad about this. I'm most likely dead. Yeah, I'm definitely dead. I'm just gonna get some farm. I don't understand why she didn't ult. Like, she should have just tried to commit to the fight. Her ult would have done so much damage to the both of them still. In this scenario, when she was full HP, all she had to do was just use it. Well, she missed her E. Okay, fine. Fair enough, then. If that is the case, then sure, I suppose. We're gonna go for Sterax next. That's big for them. Like, I, I committed, like, eventually committed to a play I couldn't do anything about because she just died without actually doing any damage at all. Which made that fight very hard. You, this guy does not even focus the Jax. Focus the Jax, man. What, what do you mean? He just, like, did half of his damage towards the Thresh instead of just killing the 1000 gold shutdown Jax. Ooh, she's 2 and 9. I only realized this just now. That's kind of wild. He's, yeah, okay, 2 and 9 is pretty rough. Explains why she's so weak, I suppose. 
Let's get this. I would like the dragon, but I don't know if that's possible. Lee Sin's bot lane. I'm gonna... Um, she's probably dead before I get there. Actually, this time... No, she got ulted, so she can't ult. Can she ult? That's rough. Uh, she's, uh, she's pretty much trolling. She also went cleaver first item. That's very troll. Actually, I think, yeah. Eh, I think it's okay. I don't know what her second item is. Is that a... What is that? I lose dragon here, guaranteed. There's nothing I can do. There's just simply nothing I can do. I just have to wait for my bot lane to get here at the very least. Okay, fresh is top, but... Like... Kite, 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 kite! No, I didn't get my W back in time, and why don't you kick him away from me, man? Ah, oh, he gets... Oh, no, you did not... Okay, thank God he got him. <laughs> he did not just kick him over the wall. Alright, I'll take it. I mean, it's not bad, really. I, I think he could have saved my ass if he just used the, j the kick earlier. But, eh, eh. Not too worrying. Uh, I'm happy to trade that. Like, they do get the dragon, of course. Which is not ideal. But, uh, we do get, like, the overall victory there. Because Korkmaz gets a thousand gold off Jax. So, I'm very happy with that. Even though I have to take all the damage. It's no problem. The, the only sad part here, really, is the fact that I am just straight up losing my Hydra stacks on repeat, which is not ideal. Fuck, please. Just don't be AFK mid. You have to just start hitting Baron. I need to run past here everything and just go over the wall, which is going to be the fastest way to get there. I should be able to do this. I don't think Jax has teleport, but maybe he does. Oh, great. Okay, we're fine. We're leaving. We're, we're leaving. Sure, sure, sure. Absolutely fine. I'm just gonna clean all my camps up. Oh, no. That is, just a, that is a recall position right there. I, I, for a second, thought this was Lulu. I think we're still okay, though. Kill Jax. I mean, we're getting trades. It's okay. I'm gonna take this here. And Cleaver next. We're getting trades, so it's not too bad. It's just, uh... Fights are a bit awkward, really. There, there, someone who recalled here is very greedy to be recalling in that spot. It's a really greedy recall. I mean, it kind of worked. Like, for me, like, the thing here is, right, I have a Kokma Lulu, which is going to scale really well. I'm not going to be so bad myself either. Oh, God. Eh, yeah, one for one with a 3 and 11 Alawi is definitely not too bad. I'll take it. So, like, the scaling we have and feeding the Kokma in situations, because Kokma is getting kills in these fights. That's really nice. But it's actually not too bad for us. I just really need to get my Hydra stacked up, honestly. I lost red buff. Touch. Show me the path. Right, get the midway for Hydra stacks as well. Keep it nice and consistent, at least. I have, I have a few too many deaths, probably, but... Got both wards, please. Yeah, there we go. far is he from his Titanic, do you think? I'm actually, like, genuinely a bit curious. If he's, like, relatively close, that'd be good. Uh, nice scuttles here. I need to get Cleaver still as well. Uh, 150, I see. Oh, no, Alawi is dead. What is that placement? What is that placement, man? Oh, God. Yeah, that's really bad. That is, like, I don't know how you can stand there in any universe ever. That is really bad placement. Gonna in second, maybe? We're gonna be able to ult defend him, I think. And ult again, make sure he gets to do damage. 
that's one kill. And I defended my entire team, so at least they're not dead. They walked up so far, though, man. Like, I had to do that. And I did not really want to do that, but I had literally zero choice. Because if I don't do that, my entire team will die. Because they walked up too far. I think it's okay, but I'm, again, losing Hydra stacks. I'm not happy about having to do that, but I traded at least a two for one, I believe. So it's, that's the best outcome I can ask for, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. All right, we are close to Cleaver, which is nice. I'm going to have to switch my boots relatively soon as well for uh, Mercs, because I'm getting CC'd a bit too much. Like, CDR boots are great, but mostly for the early game, right? Like, after the early game, they're not that good anymore, and I just have to get rid of them soon for uh, Mercs for additional mag or for additional tenacity to not get CC'd as much, because they do have a lot of CC capabilities. Uh, we have an Alawi going top lane. I don't like this too much. Like, she does have teleport, but I'm still not a fan. Should hit me level 15, probably. Does it? It doesn't. Okay, fine. Can I t move today, please? That'd be wonderful. You didn't die? Oh, come on. Uh, Kokma is getting heavily zoned as well, I see. Uh, my, I guess. I don't know. I don't know, man. I thought I had such a good engage, and apparently three people can get zoned by a, by a Jax. That's rough. Um, cause I, I hit my knock up on like three, the four people, I think. Three, I think, potentially. I don't know. I feel like my Kokma is just standing way too far back. I, I don't understand what, what is exactly going on in these fights. I actually don't quite understand. I'm going to sell my boots right now for the Mercs. We lost Baron and Dragon there. I'm a little bit like... I'm a bit confused. Like, I really need to look back at, like, Kokma's placement better. Because I feel like he is completely trolling his positioning. Like, actually. Allow he might be able to win that. Nah, okay, fair enough. Zero and third Or three and thirteen, sorry. Hmm. Pretty rough. I don't know. I guess I need to just like play the fight slower and just completely defend my Kokma and try to play around his placement or something. I feel like that might be my only bet. I could take his bot side. There's a Thresh. He's not gonna die there, that's okay. Hmm. Bring me a real challenge. I'm gonna have to smite this because he's never gonna give that to me. Otherwise, I need the XP. Going for Blade of the Rune King next. I just have to go for like Caitlyn or something. I guess I'm just gonna focus Caitlyn here. Should be a good engage on my end. Get the knock up on him as well. Yep, to this. Good. Oh, this is so stupid, man. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Lissandra ultimate is just like, yeah, okay. Ah, that's a good flank. That's what we like to see. That's not too bad. I do I have enough for Yes I do. Okay, I'm just gonna reset for Cleaver then. Hmm. Now we're just going to try to keep consistently doing something like that. And just dive the Caitlyn. And like give, an, uh, give a good situation for, for my team, I suppose. As long as Jax is not in these fights, we're looking pretty good. But still a bit of a pain, honestly. I have a lot of deaths, I will say. But then again, I, uh, it's kind of expected, I suppose. I don't really have a front line apart from me. So that's a bit of a struggle. Ooh, hex drinker, eh? All I have to do in these fights is defend my Kokma. If I can create as much opening for Kokma as possible, that, that is good. That is what I want to see. Right. 
Ah, oh, that's annoying. It should be okay. If I can move today, please. Make sure to use my W as a shield there. Don't get hit by that. I'm just gonna kite Lee Sin out. If he wants to do this, I can do this all day. I don't care. For me, this is really good because I'm dragging their other member away from the team fight. So I do kill the Jax there, and I also kite Lee Sin into Oblivion. So he actually doesn't get to play the fight anymore because he chased me. So that was a very good distraction move on my end, and then also killing Jax with ult and stuff. I don't know if I win this fight, but I can try. Oh, he just queued that. I actually have a pretty good chance of winning the fight now then. Um, I'm just gonna chill here, man. Just push mid. What are you doing? What? Are you... No, don't... Are you serious? I literally keep this guy busy on tops. So you have a free push on mid and you're walking top. Are you... That's it. That... Okay. <laughs> oh my god, the macro. He's dead. Fair enough. It's good, man. He really chased me very, very far. Just gonna get top turret here. I don't think we can push to the end. They just drag on you. Yeah, 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 chill. I'm going. This is good, though. You saw the, the kiting there. Very, very useful. They send, like, completely chased me. I got the jacks. I got a good ult to entirely zone their backline, so we can just focus the jacks as well. The entire fight positioning was, there, was pretty good there. There's good dragon DPS, and he also started it correctly, so that's lovely to see. I can easily defend my Korkma with my ult. I think I'm just going to go Stoneplate last item at this point. I just need to survive. Stoneplate's going to be amazing for that right now. Take this and back. I'm not going to be able to afford the entire thing. This is bad. I need to move. This is not good. Okay, actually, this might be decent. I'm just going to instantly ult him there, because if he dies, it's really good. That's annoying. I should be able to get them with a W on this wall. Use my W for a bit of a dash there. He's dead. We Baron. Are we Baron? This is all looking very solid, I will say. These fights are pretty clean. Tanking that for Kokma, I don't care. In case you're wondering why I did that, I don't want Kokma to get the Q on him. If he gets it on me, I'm happy with that, you know what I mean? Please be careful. I want a Baron win. I'll go for Baron here. We have to Baron here. I'll take that, that's no problem. The Kokma is gonna turn, so I'm maybe gonna turn. We can just we can just go for it. It should be fine. I need the Korkma to do full damage. I'm gonna have W to get a bit of a dash so I can get here faster. And we just finish this off. It should be free. All of us reset. Beautiful. And I'm gonna go stone plate here. Because I am still the one diving in by myself for the most cases. So I can do this. I can go pick up the red buff. And I'm looking good. Like, as you can see here, I still have 256 CS. And this is mostly because of Tiamat. Like, really is. Because without Tiamat, I would never have kept up enough farming tempo on this champion, which would have been a significant problem. Didn't ult there, luckily. I'm gonna go in on Caitlyn here. One's dead. Beautiful. I know, like with Stoneplate and everything, I'm just tanky enough to just go for stuff like that. So I'm absolutely chilling. We could just end here. They were way too greedy going for that scuttle and it's just over. Nice. 
bit of an up and down game, I suppose, but uh, I guess it shows you like Wukong accurately. This is the only way I think he's playable. Uh, Trinity Force I also think is better than Sunder. The 3200 here, 2400 here, 1700 carved. And yeah, that's about it. I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to like button below, and I'll see you guys in the endgame stats. All right, so for the endgame stats here, I ended up doing 31.6k damage, which is respectable, really. I am, like, mostly the frontliner, uh, so my damage taken should be the main stat here. I still, still obviously do a respectable amount of damage. It's not bad, but I'm not going to out-damage a Kog'Maw. Like, the, I have pretty good scaling damage champions on my team, so, you know, there's also only so much damage to be done, so it's fine. Uh, we have true damage to champions at 800, which is mostly smite damage. Um, damage to objectives here at 32k. Uh, kind of whatever I could get type of situation. They obviously got quite a few dragons. It was a bit of a struggle game, absolutely. But uh, yeah, eventually like I kind of started playing around my Kogma in a certain manner as well. To the point where like I don't have to trust for like trust him to walk up. I just have to like kind of create space uh, or like play around him for like space if that makes sense which ended up working better for this type of player at least could have prevented me a lot of deaths i guess but yeah uh, healing done at 21.6k which is just a very solid amount we have self-mitigated damage oh sorry damage taken first and we have damage taken at 48.2 now here i want you to note i actually have the most relevant damage taken still because Elawi has a lot of stupid deaths she has like 17 deaths. What did she have? 14, 17 deaths? 14 deaths. Like a lot of these deaths were just absolutely troll, right? So yes, she does have a lot of damage taken in this stat right here. But there was a, like a lot of deaths that were just completely out of position and just dead for no reason type of situation, right? So it, yeah, it, it's Devin's taken the high shore, but the same kind of goes for Lee Sin here. He eventually started like, actually, he has a more reasonable amount of deaths. I thought he had a little bit more. You have to take the death number into account and the way they were dying as well. Um, to the point to see where like damage taken is actually a good stat or kind of a troll stat. Because there is definitely a difference there. And we have self-mitigated damage at 45.5k uh, 45 as well. 61k here as well. A, a, a good amount of this could be relevant damage. But again, as I said, I'm mostly certain that most of her damage taken is pretty troll. Because you saw like her di dying like 1v5 in Baron situation, like uh, when she just walked up too far for no reason, or walking up in the top lane too far. And all those situations, yes, you're going to take a lot of damage, um, but it's not going to be good damage to take. Uh, my damage generally was a bit better, but I also had some some stupidity in there. Uh, but like later on, when I when it kind of clicked for me, I started not dying as much and like actually doing way more in team fights to take damage. So it's a bit of a uh, a stat to always consider. In a situation like that, we have gold earned, which is very important here to see is 18.6k gold earned. And this is honestly consistency um, for Tiamat. Going for Tiamat, so you have consistent clearing and Hydra as well. Like you want to have the AoE damage. You want to kill your camps at an effective pace because you're not going to max your E. You're going to go QWE on a skill order for Wukong. Uh, so without E, your clear speed will be hampered. And with Q max and a Tiamat, you have a respectable amount of clear speed. And I was able to keep it up, uh, keep up a consistent clearing, which ended me with a 256, 57 um, uh, CS compared to 190 or so. Uh, so, you know, I do get a lead still, which like obviously spread out to a, quite a lead because I'm also a level higher than him. Uh, but this lead is important. This, the Tiamat is important. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to play Wukong because his clear speed will be way too bad otherwise and you will just not have a good time unless you get kills. And uh, yeah, that is just flipping a coin at that point, right? So uh, if you want consistency, it's necessary. We have, uh, sorry, gold earned. I already did this. Yeah, so now we have the runes. Conquer healed me for 1300, which is quite a lot. Um, but uh, the adaptive damage means more, obviously. So that is a stat you don't see. Triumph for 2500 health, which is very good. And then 500 gold. Triumph is just really good uh, for, like, the health regeneration in fights, right? Like, you can get a lot of valuable health back from this. So the 2500 HP is very valuable health, mostly. Uh, so there is that. A tenacity CC reduction, which the combination for mercs later on, because I was getting CC'd a little bit too much, I switched out my boots for that. We have lost stand for the bonus damage. Uh, I like this more because it helps me win closer fights, generally. Uh, and I think that's more relevant than having, like, Kudegra, which can give you more damage total. But 
uh, will be less effective in closer fights and makes those closer fights like yeah a little bit more tricky with magical footwear not to have to buy boots so you can focus on buying your tm at first and then futures markets to try to secure a tm on your first back generally with a full clear and an assist um futures market will allow you to buy tm at you got a full clear and a kill you won't need it uh, but you know it's it just more consistent and also which i did in this game as well i'd highly recommend dying for the kill if you can get a kill but you're gonna die for it i actually recommend that uh, because of the fact that you can buy tm on your first back as a guarantee like really try to get that down if you can get that like that's the biggest rng factor rng factor because all you really have to get is an is an assist uh, to be able to afford it and that's generally possible generally possible uh, but otherwise you can i guess just get a pickaxe after your first back and get it later i suppose but yeah that's why we have futures market uh, to secure that and obviously some other buys can be nice and the build like this as well, the way I build it and the order I built it in is pretty much the build you should do every single game. There is not very, there's no variation to this. The only variation you can do is Trinity Force into a Divine Sunder into very tanky teams. And if you're doing that as well, if you're going Trinity Force into Divine Sunder or change it for Divine Sunder, right? Uh, then Sterex does lose a bit of its value as well because Sterex holds more value when you synergize it with Triforce. Um, so that is something to think about. You can then potentially replace your Sterax for another tank item or, or something like that. Or like, a, or like a Death's Dance, for example, could be a possibility as well. Uh, but if you're going Trinity Force, then you're definitely going Sterax. And in, I would recommend Trinity Force in 90% of games as well, because it is just simply a better item than Divine Sunder is at the moment. So yeah, with all that being said, though, that is it for Wukong. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to the like button below upload daily so be sure to subscribe for more and i'll see you guys tomorrow with another one bye